can you really plug in your £50,000 EV using a 3-pin 13-amp plug? I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Well, it's been a long while since I launched a home charging video. Look out for that one below if you're interested. But this is a fully updated, brand new video, start to finish, with several new features. Please enjoy. A quick note of caution, the sharp-eyed viewers will notice that my home charger plug has tape around the handle to cable joint. Is this safe? No, I notice some hairline cracking or deterioration on the rubber grommet that seals the cable to the handle. So on my last electrical inspection, yeah, I get my circuit checked regularly. It's an expensive car and my wife and I are quite precious as well. So I get regular inspections. Oh, for example, during the last visit, uh, the electrician changed the trip or the circuit breaker or RCD, can't remember which, uh, that supplies the home charger. And that was to bring my EV charger installation up to date with the latest regulations. You see, regulations change and they have changed over the last four years. And although the original installation was still safe and legal, it did not actually meet current installation regulations. He upgraded it. I also got him to check that plug and the cable and he tested it and he certified it totally safe. He said it was just surface wear and tear and still fully waterproof and it did not need replacing. He suggested just put a bit of tape around it and that should prevent much further deterioration. You see, you really should take a lot of care over your electrics. Get professional advice. It's actually illegal to do this work yourself. And many comments I receive seem to, seem to indicate that many people do not always follow that. Anyway, my setup. I do have a Tesla 7 kilowatt home charger. You'll see that in the background in some of the shots, but I shall not be using that in this video. This video is aimed squarely at those who wonder whether or not they need an expensive home charger. Well, starting from backing the car up to the charging, charging parking space, I get the cables out that were supplied with the car. Now, it is my belief that all cars get a home charging pack, but I cannot say that for certain. I certainly got one. It is in a neat carry case and it sits in the wheel storage bay at all the time. Well, why not put it under the floor as almost all people do? Well, that's a surprise I'm keeping for the end of the video, when I try and fail to do just that. No, it's not what you think, and it will be a shock to many of you. On the shorter cable of the two, I get the 13 amp 3-pin plug on one end, and on the other end a universal plug. Uh, by the way, if I go abroad, say to France, I can get a European cable and plug that just plugs straight into a French socket without needing a continental adapter. Well, on the other side of the case is the longer cable with the charger and a universal socket on one end and the Type 2 plug for the car on the other. The supplied cable is generous in length. Well, to open my charger flap, unlike many modern Teslas, I cannot press the flap. Nothing happens. I open it here uh, from using the app. With the flap open and the lights turn blue, I plug in the plug. It clicks as it locks. Now here I have two sockets available to, uh, available to me for charging. I have a kitchen socket, a spare, and I can pass the cable through the window. Uh, it's not a good plan if you're planning on leaving it charging overnight, the new window open. Uh, so I also have an external waterproof socket, which I could leave plugged in overnight quite safely and happily. Well, for this video, I'm going to use both. Well, first, the kitchen window. If you just need a few hours topping up charging and you're in the house, you're able to keep an eye on it. This is absolutely fine. Plug the universal plug into the socket. It clicks. Then plug the plug into the kitchen socket. Turn it on. Well, that sounds an awful lot of plugs and sockets. The explanation is actually far more complicated than the practice. So the lights on the car will turn green, showing it's charging. I check the app on my phone and indeed it is charging. The voltage is stated as 241 volts and the current is 10 amps. Now, I know a lot of you will query this. Whoa, you should be getting more. It's 13 amps and things like that. 
Well, the adapter supplied by Tesla has two outputs, as stated on the label. If I look on the back, it says it can do 32 amps or 16 amps. So why am I getting 10 amps? Well, absolutely no idea. That's not for me to say. It's always done this from the day I got it. It still does it today. Charges the car, so I'm happy. Maybe other chargers will give me a faster rate. I don't know. Maybe the Tesla battery management system is setting the 10 amps and it'll do that whatever charger I plug in. Whatever it is, this is the one I use and I've used this for a few weeks while waiting for the 7 kilowatt home charger to be installed. So it works. Uh, if you can get one that goes faster, great, go for it. Well, charging starts and the speed I get is shown as five miles an hour. I seem silly talking about miles an hour for charging, but that's how it's measured. For every hour that it is plugged in, it will add five miles to the battery. So I'll now do the same with the external waterproof socket. See, many of us have these already. Some of us might want to install one, uh, but we often use them for things like the lawnmower, the strimmer, the hedge cutter, or maybe the car hoover. Well, if I plug it in there, it just works perfectly, exactly the same. I can happily leave this one overnight and it gives exactly the same speed and performance, still five miles an hour. So now let's have a look at the speed and the cost. What do they mean in real life? Well, the first question, how long will it take to fully charge the battery? Well, my setup supplies a steady 240 volts at 10 amps. That's 2.4 kilowatts. Note this is speed, not capacity. If I leave it plugged in for an hour at that speed, it will add 2.4 kilowatt hours to the battery. That's the capacity. I have a maximum usable battery capacity of 82 kilowatt hours. That's what Tesla give me. So if I, if I was totally flat and I charge it to 100%, that will take 82 divided by 2.4 is 34 hours, a day and a half. And while the EV sceptic and the petrol heads will fall about laughing and once again quote five minutes to fill their tank, I don't actually use my three-pin plug charger this way and no EV driver ever does. That's ridiculous. That's like trying to fill your bath with a teacup. We just don't do it. If I do an average mileage, which is stated as 8,000 miles, 140 a week, or 20 miles a day, and I plug my car in each night, I only ever need to replace the 20 miles that I have just used that day. And that will take just four hours, and which I can do while I'm eating, watching TV, or sleeping. Poor petrol head has to drive down to the garage and stand there for five minutes, holding a smelly, germ-ridden pump nozzle and breathing in nasty, noxious, toxic, lethal fumes. <laughs> I know which I prefer. So for an average motorist doing up to maybe 50, 60, 70 miles a day, they only never ever need to plug in each day. It will always be full every morning, and this is absolutely perfect. So let's have a look at the cost. The standard variable tariff for electricity in the UK, this is the maximum you can be charged, it's set by the government, varies, it's currently 27 pence per kilowatt hour, as from the 1st of April 2024. So if I'm adding, in this case, four hours at 2.4 kilowatts, that gives me 9.6 kilowatt hours, at 27 pence per kilowatt hour, that's £2.60. And that has replaced 20 miles driven during the day. So each mile cost me 13 pence. Now, for comparison, a petrol car at £1.50 a litre doing 40 miles a gallon will cost 17 pence a mile, and one doing 50 miles per gallon will cost 14. So to answer the first question, can an EV make financial sense if you just plug into the mains on your standard variable tariff? Yes, definitely. But it's also definitely not exciting. So what's the secret? Well, it's obviously off-peak electricity. If you have an EV, you can contact your utility company and they will offer you a really cheap overnight rate specifically for charging your EV. Oh, by the way, the rest of your house drops down to the cheap rate as well. 
It is free to switch to any supplier who offers this and it takes less than five days. I know because I just switched to get an even better rate and that took four days from start to finish. It's really simple to do. Now, all the utility companies do it. British Gas, Eon, EDF, uh, Ovo, Octavus, you name them all. They all have a special tariff and they all average somewhere around about 6, 7, 7 half, 8p per kilowatt hour. It's for a limited period, usually about five, six or seven hours. And it's nearly always at specific times. Mine is between 11.30 p.m. and 5.30 a.m. So that can operate for up to six hours. But here I only need four hours. So that works brilliantly. Now let's run that sum again, but now uh, at my actual rate with my Intelligent Octopus Go of 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour between 11.30 and 5.30 a.m. So same equation, 9.6 kilowatt hours times 7.5p, hang on, 72p, yeah, you heard just 72p now replaces 20 miles of driving. That makes an incredible 3.6 pence per mile. Or, to put it into terms that Petrolhead can understand, I pay 75% less to drive 20 miles than they do, even if they're getting 50 miles to the gallon. Or, how about their car would have to do an amazing 190 miles to the gallon to match mine? Any takers? You see, this now is exciting, but it can't be that simple, can it? See, for me, my car and my charger and average mileage, yes, it is. It's all I need. I can drive happily up to 30 mile a day every day and simply charge overnight during the ludic ludicrously cheap rate. But hold on, that's only 30 miles of ridiculously cheap charging. What happens if I do, I don't know, 80 miles a day? I can only get 30 mile of cheap charging. That doesn't work. <laughs> oh, yes, it does. 80 miles cheap. Here we come. You see, I simply plug it in when I get home at six o'clock. That's hypothetical me. That's when I, when I get home from work. And I unplug it again in the morning when I leave at 8 a.m. That's up to about 14 hours a day. At five mile an hour, I can recharge 70 miles every night. It will use six hours at the cheap rate. That's six times 2.4 kilowatts an hour times 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour. That's a pound and 8p. The remaining eight hours will be at the standard tariff of 27p. And that gives a total of five pound 14. So the total for 70 miles recharging is £6.24. That's covered 70 miles. So if we calculate that one, that's got, well, it has gone up, but that is now almost nine pence a mile. That is still almost half the price of a car, petrol car doing 40 miles to the gallon and a lot cheaper than a car doing 50 miles to the gallon. That is still well worth it. But hold on, your battery's not full. You're missing 10 miles every day. What well, exactly, and that is what a battery is for, storage. So on day one, you do 80 miles, you top up 70, you're missing 10 miles. And the same applies each day of the week through to Friday. When I arrive back on a Friday night, my battery will be missing a total of 50 miles plus the 80 miles I've done that day. So I just plug it in as normal. Now, when I wake up late on a Saturday morning, I don't work on a Saturday, um, I find that the uh, 70 miles has been already added back. That's what it normally does. So I'm now 60 mile down. But I've got the whole weekend ahead of me. And I can leave it plugged in. I've got at least 30 hours charging time ahead of me, less any time that I drive. And 12 of those hours, Saturday night, Saturday night and Sunday night, will be six hours at the cheap rate of 7.5p. So, that's good for about 150 miles, and all I need to add is 50 or 60 miles. We see people really do need to think out of the box sometimes. 
Most EV owners who cover average mileage can cope quite happily on a three-pin plug. No need at all to buy an expensive home charger at all. This could be good for up to 60, 70, maybe 80 miles driving a day. OK, let's go back to where I keep my cables. I said I'd get here. Well, different Tesla models have different storage methods. Mine, for example, is the single motor. So I have a large fruit. Uh, that's a front boot to you and me. I have an extra storage space where the front motor would normally be. I lose a motor and I gain storage. But what about the boot? Isn't there a cable storage box under the boot? Well, normally yes, but on some early models, there was an additional factory option, which my car has. Well, I'll leave you to watch rather than tell you what I actually store under there. Well, that actually surprises many people, uh, particularly when I pull into a car park and the grandkids get out the boot. It's an absolutely great addition. I love it, but it is limited in use. It's not for adults. So as my grandkids grow up, one day it will no longer be an option. Uh, that's several years away and I have had four years use already from them. I, I love them. And before anyone says, how dangerous in a rear end collision? Whoa, really? Well, first, the seat is an integral part of the chassis. It's welded in. Uh, and that means it's unlike the child seats that others use. What, they just have a couple of clips? Whoa, that's not very good. Uh, but second, it is a full harness. Lie unlike the lap and diagonal used on larger kids' seats and booster seats. Really secure. But come on. Half the accidents are front end and half a rear end. So in a front end crash with a normal child seat, your child or grandchild would be thrown forward violently out of the seat, restrained only by the straps and two isofix brackets. In a front end in mine, the kids would be thrown back into the fully supported, fully cushioned seat and come to no harm at all. Well, in a rear end crash, the reverse happens. Uh, ordinary seats would operate like mine does if in a rear end crash uh, your ch children or grandchildren would be thrown back into them perfectly safely. While mine would still be safer, they've got a safer, stronger mounting and a proper security seatbelt system. Uh, it's 50 50. My principle don't crash at all and test it. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I'll be covering home chargers in the next video, so keep a lookout for that one. But in the meantime, anyone who drives 50, 60, 70 miles a day, you probably don't need a home charger. It's only once you get above that that they come into their own. You might want to watch that video anyhow and learn a bit more about it. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave.